in the heart of an ancient forest, shrouded in mist and untouched by time, stood the remnants of a once grand estate. The locals whispered of its curse, the story of Lady Evelyn, who vanished on a stormy night, leaving behind a mansion filled with unspeakable dread. As the full moon crested the night sky, a weary traveler, drawn by tales of hidden treasures and haunted whispers, approached the decrepit gates. The iron moaned under his touch, as if warning him of the horrors that lay beyond. Unperturbed, he ventured forth, his lantern piercing the all-consuming darkness. Within the mansion, time seemed distorted. Shadows danced along the walls, crafting grotesque shapes, while the air was thick with the scent of decay. As he explored the grand halls, he stumbled upon a portrait, its frame coated in layers of dust, the face in the painting, a striking resemblance to Lady Evelyn, watched him with eyes that seemed almost alive, flickering with a spectral light. Drawn by an inexplicable force, the traveler found himself in the mansion's heart, a library, where a single book lay open on a desk. The pages, yellowed with age, contained a diary, detailing Lady Evelyn's descent into madness. Her obsession an ancient ritual that promised to bring back her deceased lover. As the wind howled, the traveler heard soft whispers echoing through the corridors, growing louder, more insistent. He realized too late that the whispers were not born of the wind, but were the anguished cries of Lady Evelyn's spirit, eternally searching for someone complete her dark ritual. Suddenly, the ground trembled, and a hidden chamber beneath the library floor revealed itself. Inside, an altar and incomplete incantations awaited. The traveler, caught in the grip of an unseen force, found himself compelled to finish what Lady Evelyn started. As he spoke the final words, the temperature plummeted and the boundary between the living and the dead blurred. The story hangs in the balance. The fate of the traveler intertwined with the restless spirit of Lady Evelyn as the ritual's completion promises to unleash an even greater horror upon the world. As the incantation's final syllable slipped from the traveler's lips, the chamber shook violently ancient stones grinding against each other. A ghastly chill swept through the room, and the air grew thick with the scent of death. Shadows coalesced into spectral forms, swirling around the altar, their whispers intensifying into screams of agony and despair. The traveler, paralyzed with fear, watched as the ghostly figure of Lady Evelyn materialized before the altar, her eyes glowing with a malevolent light. She spoke in a voice that was both beautiful and terrifying, filling the room with a sorrowful melody that spoke of lost love and eternal torment. Thou who hast completed the rite, thy soul is now entwined with mine, she intoned. Her spectral hands reached out, caressing the air inches from the traveler's face, as if trying to connect with the living once more. Around them, the mansion began to warp and decay at an accelerated pace, as if the ritual had unleashed the pent-up years of neglect and sorrow. Walls that once bore the weight of history now groaned under the strain of spectral forces, as portraits and tapestries aged and withered in seconds. Outside, the forest itself seemed to respond to the mansion's agony. Trees bent inward, their branches
just scratching against the windows, like the fingers of the dead. And the mist thickened, obscuring the boundary between the manor and the woods. The traveler, now bound to the mansion by the ritual, felt his consciousness merge with the house's very essence. He saw through the eyes of the mansion, feeling its pain and sorrow, its longing for redemption. He experienced the memories of those who had lived and died within its walls, each tale a tapestry of joy and despair. In this shared consciousness, he understood Lady Evelyn's true desire was not just to resurrect her lover, but to free the mansion from its eternal suffering, to break the cycle of death and despair that had plagued it. The mansion, alive with unworldly energy, began to reveal its darkest secrets to the traveler. Hidden rooms emerged from the shadows, each holding a piece of the puzzle of the estate's tragic history. The traveler, driven by a newfound purpose, ventured deeper into the heart of the manor, uncovering clues that hinted at a way to end the curse. Yet, as he delved further, he realized the true extent of the horror that the mansion harbored. Spirits trapped between worlds relived their last moments in perpetual torment, ensnared by the curse that Lady Evelyn had unwittingly unleashed. As the night waned, the boundary between the living and the dead grew ever thinner, and the mansion seemed to be heading towards a final, catastrophic convergence of spiritual and temporal energies. The Traveler, now a part of the mansion's legacy, faced the daunting task of unraveling the curse before the dawn, lest he become another lost soul in the mansion's tragic history. The air thickened with anticipation, as if the very fabric of reality awaited the outcome of this nocturnal odyssey. The story, rich with the promise of dark revelations and spectral horrors, was far from over. In the dim light of the early morning, the mansion seemed to pulse with a life of its own, its walls groaning under the weight of centuries-old secrets. The traveler, now deeply entwined with the essence of the house, navigated the shifting corridors, each step revealing more of the mansion's tragic past. He stumbled upon a grand ballroom, where ghostly figures danced in an endless masquerade, their faces locked in expressions of joy and sorrow. The music, a haunting melody that echoed through the halls, seemed to emanate from nowhere and everywhere at once, pulling the traveler deeper into the mansion's memories. In the center of the ballroom, a spectral figure in a tattered gown, unmistakably Lady Evelyn, danced alone, her movements both graceful and desperate. As the traveler approached, the music crescendoed, and the dancers paused, turning their hollow eyes upon him. Lady Evelyn reached out, her hand passing through his as she whispered secrets of the past, revealing how her love and obsession had twisted into a dark pact that bound her soul to the mansion. The traveler, guided by Lady Evelyn's revelations, realized that the key to breaking the curse lay in reuniting her with her lost love, whose spirit was trapped in the darkest depths of the estate, consumed by grief and rage. With each step towards this hidden chamber, the house's morbid history unraveled, exposing the depths of its pain. Deep beneath the mansion, in a vault sealed by magic and despair, the traveler found the remains of Lady Evelyn's lover, 
his spirit corrupted by the dark ritual that was meant to resurrect him. The air here was thick with malice, and shadows writhed against the walls, forming images of the past rituals and sacrifices made in the name of forbidden love. As the traveler attempted to approach, the spirit lashed out, a vortex of spectral energy that threatened to consume him. But amidst this chaos, he heard Lady Evelyn's voice, a soothing balm that calmed the storm. She spoke of her regret and her undying love, her words reaching her lover's tormented spirit, diminishing his rage. The mansion, sensing the potential for release from its eternal agony, aided the traveler, revealing hidden lore and ancient spells scattered throughout its confines. With Lady Evelyn's guidance, the traveler began to piece together a ritual that could mend the broken bonds of the past and free the spirits from their earthly tethers. As the night gave way to the faintest light of dawn, a fragile hope flickered within the cursed walls. The traveler, with the spirits of Lady Evelyn and her lover swirling around him, prepared to cast the final spell that might either free them all or bind them together in darkness forever. The mansion held its breath, the spectral inhabitants pausing in their endless routines as the traveler standing at the nexus of life and death, began the incantation that would decide their fates. The story, teetering on the edge of salvation or damnation, continued to weave its dark narrative, promising more secrets to be revealed and more horrors to be confronted. As the traveler chanted the ancient words of the spell, the mansion quivered, its very foundations resonating with the power of the incantation. The air shimmered with ethereal energy, and the boundary between the physical and the spiritual realms thinned to a gossamer veil. The spirits of the mansion, drawn to the ritual, gathered around, their forms flickering like candle flames in a draft. Lady Evelyn and her lover, now mere steps from each other after centuries of separation, reached out, their hands nearly touching, their faces etched with longing and despair. The spell's power grew, its arcane energy weaving through the mansion, unearthing long-buried memories and secrets. Rooms long sealed away sprang open, revealing the true extent of the tragedy that had befallen the estate and its inhabitants. The traveler, acting as the conduit for this overwhelming power, felt the weight of centuries of sorrow and loss bearing down upon him. In this maelstrom of spiritual turmoil, the traveler glimpsed the true cause of the curse, a pact made in desperation and grief, twisting the natural order and binding the souls of the dead to the mansion. The spell Lady Evelyn had cast in her quest to reunite with her lover had ensnared every soul that touched the estate, creating a vortex of despair that consumed all within its reach. As the incantation neared its climax, the spirits began to coalesce, their forms becoming more distinct, more desperate to break free from their eternal prison. The mansion itself seemed to cry out, its voice a cacophony of every soul it had absorbed, pleading for release, for peace. The traveler, now at the heart of the storm, struggled to maintain control as the spell threatened to overwhelm him. He could feel the curse fighting back, a dark force 
unwilling to relinquish its hold on the mansion and its prisoners. The air crackled with tension, the very fabric of reality straining under the spell's immense power. Just as the ritual reached its peak, a sudden, deafening silence enveloped the mansion. The spirits, the traveler, and the very house itself seemed suspended in time, caught in the moment between damnation and salvation. In this timeless void, the traveler saw the potential outcomes of his actions. The mansion restored to its former glory, free of its curse, or plunged into deeper darkness, its walls forever a tomb for the tormented souls. This moment of stasis, however, was but the eye of the storm, a fleeting pause before the spell's power fully unleashed. The mansion, the spirits, and the traveler stood on the brink of a new dawn or eternal night, their fates intertwined and hanging in the balance. As the silence shattered, the spell's power burst forth, a tidal wave of light and darkness colliding in a crescendo of spectral energy. The mansion, once a prison of despair, became the battleground for its final liberation or its ultimate downfall. The story, teeming with unresolved mysteries and unexplored paths, beckoned the traveler deeper into its heart, promising more revelations and challenges in the twisted corridors of the haunted estate. The burst of energy from the spell's culmination tore through the mansion, its force shaking the very foundations of the estate. Walls cracked and groaned, as if the building itself were crying out in pain, or perhaps relief. The light and darkness swirled around the traveler, Lady Evelyn and her lover, intertwining in a visual symphony that blurred the lines between salvation and damnation. As the energy storm intensified, the mansion began to transform. Corridors twisted upon themselves, creating labyrinthine passages that defied logic, while rooms shifted and changed, revealing hidden depths and secrets long concealed by time and the curse. The mansion, alive with spectral energy, seemed to be reliving its past, cycling through moments of joy and terror, life and death, in a rapid, chaotic dance. The traveler, at the center of this maelstrom, felt his consciousness expand, merging not only with the mansion, but with the very essence of the curse itself. He saw through the eyes of those who had suffered and despaired within these walls, understanding the full breadth of the tragedy that had unfolded over centuries. In this heightened state of awareness, he witnessed the moment of Lady Evelyn's fateful decision the dark ritual that bound her soul, and those of all who perished in the mansion to its decaying form. Her lover, caught in a perpetual cycle of rage and grief, was the nexus of the curse, his unending sorrow feeding the darkness that permeated the estate. As the traveler navigated through the tempest of spirits and memories, he realized that to break the curse, he must heal the wounds of the past, starting with the shattered bond between Lady Evelyn and her lover, approaching the couple, who were now locked in an embrace of light and shadow. He began to recite a new incantation, one of forgiveness and release, crafted from the deepest truths of the mansion's sorrowful history. With each word spoken, the storm of energy began to abate, the swirling chaos of light and darkness starting to 
to untangle the spirits of the mansion, caught in the wake of the traveler's spell, found solace in his words, their forms softening, their faces reflecting a peace long forgotten. Outside, the first light of dawn crept across the landscape its rays piercing the dense fog that shrouded the mansion. The forest, once menacing and foreboding, now seemed to watch in silent anticipation, its dark presence receding with the night. Yet, as the spell neared its completion, a sudden, ominous rumbling echoed through the mansion. A reminder that the curse would not be lifted without a final, desperate struggle. The walls trembled, and the ground shook as if the estate itself were resisting the spell, fighting to maintain its grip on the souls it had claimed. In the heart of the mansion, where the ritual reached its zenith, the traveler, Lady Evelyn, and her lover were enveloped in a blinding light figures silhouetted against the pulsating energy that threatened to either free or consume them. The story, now teetering on the edge of a precipice, promised a resolution. Yee-Yeh's the blinding light enveloped the trio at the ritual's heart. The mansion's rebellion against its potential salvation intensified. The entire structure convulsed as if in the throes of agony. Its cries manifesting as spectral wails that echoed through the twisting corridors and shattered rooms. The ground beneath the mansion heaved, creating fissures that oozed a dark, viscous substance. The physical manifestation of the curse's deep-seated malice, this malevolent force surged through the mansion, seeking to disrupt the ritual and maintain its centuries-old hold on the estate and its trapped souls. In the epicenter of this chaos, the traveler, Lady Evelyn, and her lover were caught in a cyclone of competing energies. The spell, fueled by a desire for redemption and release, clashed with the curse's dark tendrils creating a vortex of spectral light and shadow that threatened to tear the very fabric of reality. Within this tumultuous storm, the Traveler's voice became the anchor, his incantation a beacon of hope amidst the despair. His words, imbued with the collective longing of the mansion's souls, wove a tapestry of light that gradually began to pierce the darkness of the curse. As the incantation continued, the spirits of the mansion, from servants to aristocrats, began to converge around the ritual's nucleus. Their forms, once twisted by grief and rage, softened as the traveler's spell wove through their essence, untangling the knots of their torment. Lady Evelyn and her lover, now at the center of this transformation, clung to each other, their spectral forms flickering between states of turmoil and tranquility. In their eyes, a dawning realization emerged, a shared understanding that their fate was the key to the mansion's salvation or its eternal damnation. The ritual's power reached a crescendo, its light illuminating every dark corner of the estate, exposing hidden truths and buried pain. The mansion itself, as if acknowledging its role in the tragedy, seemed to relent, its resistive energy waning in the face of the traveler's relentless determination. Yet. Just as the curse appeared to weaken, a deep, resonant roar shook the estate. A final, defiant stand from the dark forces at the mansion's core. 
this primal scream of the curse, a sound born from centuries of unyielding sorrow and anger, rippled through the mansion, threatening to undo the progress of the ritual. In response, the traveler, driven by an unspoken connection to the mansion and its myriad of lost souls, gathered the last reserves of his strength and conviction with a voice that resonated with the collective will of all who had suffered within the cursed walls. He pushed the incantation towards its ultimate conclusion. The mansion, now a battlefield of light and shadow, awaited the outcome of this ancient struggle. The narrative, steeped in layers of gothic horror and tragic romance, promised more revelations and trials, its heart beating in rhythm with the fate of its tormented inhabitants. The tale, far from over, continued. The roar of the curse reverberated through the mansion, a sound so potent it seemed to warp the very air. The estate's walls bled shadows, and the ground trembled as if the earth itself shared in the mansion's torment. This dark force, the lifeblood of the curse, surged in a final, desperate attempt to quash the burgeoning light of the ritual. Amidst this chaos, the traveler stood resolute, his voice unwavering as he chanted the spell's climactic verses. The air around him shimmered with spectral energy forming a vortex where the past and present collided, revealing the myriad fates that the mansion and its inhabitants could endure. Lady Evelyn and her lover, now almost corporeal in their clarity, were the nexus of this supernatural storm, their shared torment. The anchor of the curse began to dissipate under the traveler's incantations, unraveling the threads of darkness that had woven through the mansion's history. As the spell's power swelled, a luminous tranquility began to pierce the surrounding turmoil. The once menacing shadows receded, their substance melting away like mist at dawn. The spirits of the mansion, drawn to the ritual's light, found their anguish eased, their cries of despair softening to whispers of hope. The mansion itself, a sentient witness to centuries of sorrow, seemed to sigh in relief as the oppressive weight of the curse lifted. The structure, long warped by the curse's influence, gradually regained its original grandeur, its architecture no longer a monument to pain and fear. But the battle was not yet won. The core of the curse, a dark entity birthed from the original ritual gone awry, clung tenaciously to existence. It writhed in the face of the traveler's spell, a formless shadow that defied the light, striking back with tendrils of darkness that sought to extinguish the burgeoning hope. In this climactic struggle, the traveler's resolve was tested as never before. He channeled the collective strength of the mansion spirits, their shared desire for peace and release amplifying the spell's potency. With each word, the light grew brighter, its purity a bane to the curse's shadow. The confrontation reached a fever pitch the mansion now a crucible of opposing forces. The traveler, Lady Evelyn, and her lover stood at the heart of the storm, their fates intertwined with that of the mansion. The spell and the curse clashed in a cacophony of light and shadow, each striving for dominance. Their battle, a spectacle of spectral fury and celestial brilliance, Amidst this turmoil, the mansion's secrets continued to unravel. 
each revelation adding layers to the narrative. Hidden chambers opened, exposing artifacts and tomes that held forgotten knowledge and power, tools that could tip the balance in the traveler's favor. As dawn approached, the first light of the sun began to touch the horizon, its rays casting a golden glow that filtered through the mansion's windows. This new light, a symbol of the world beyond the curse, lent strength to the traveler's spell, imbuing it with the promise of a new beginning. The tale, woven from the threads of horror, tragedy, and hope, spiraled towards a moment of critical convergence. The mansion, once a prison of despair, stood on the threshold of liberation or eternal damnation. Its destiny inextricably linked to the outcome of the traveler's endeavor. The narrative, rich with gothic elements and spectral lore, promised further twists and trials, beckoning those who dare to delve deeper into its shadowed heart. The story, alive with the whispers of the past and the echoes of the future, continued to unfold its end yet to be written. Unfold, inviting the brave to unravel its mysteries and confront the darkness that lay within. As the dawn's light crept through the shattered windows, the mansion's battle between light and darkness reached its zenith. The traveler, now a conduit for the combined strength of hundreds of restless spirits, channeled the essence of the mansion's history, its joy, its sorrow, its every concealed truth into the heart of the spell. The core of the curse, a dark maelstrom of pain and anger, fought against the encroaching light with ferocious intensity. It manifested as a spectral entity, a nightmarish figure that bore the features of every soul it had consumed. Its form, a grotesque tapestry of the mansion's tragic history. The air crackled with the power of the unfolding ritual. The mansion's very structure groaning under the strain of opposing forces. The walls, imbued with centuries of sorrow, now shimmered with a spectral luminescence reflecting the internal struggle between redemption and damnation. Lady Evelyn and her lover, central to the storm of supernatural energy, were locked in an embrace that bridged the divide between life and death. Their spirits, illuminated by the traveler's spell, became beacons of hope in the face of the dark entity's wrath. As the spell intensified, the mansion's history played out in ghostly vignettes around them. Scenes of past lives, of moments both mundane and momentous, each adding weight to the traveler's incantations. The mansion, aware of its impending fate, seemed to aid the traveler, revealing long hidden secrets and guiding him through the labyrinth of its haunted past. The climactic battle between the spell and the curse echoed through the ethereal realms. A tempest of wills where every whisper of the wind, every creak of the floorboard sang of ancient battles and lost loves. The traveler, drawing upon the depths of his own spirit, fused with the essence of the mansion, becoming the fulcrum upon which the curse's fate would tilt. With the breaking of dawn, the ritual reached a critical point. The spell's light clashing with the curse's shadow in a blinding explosion of spectral energy. This shockwave sent ripples through the mansion, cracking the very air, as if reality itself might shatter under the strain. In this moment of celestial fury, the mansion's spirits surged forward, 
lending their essence to the traveler, strengthening the spell in a final, desperate bid for freedom. The dark entity, sensing its impending dissolution, unleashed a torrent of shadow, a last, spiteful defiance against the light. The mansion, caught in the crossfire of this epic confrontation, trembled on the brink of collapse or catharsis. Its every stone and beam resonated with the spell's power. Its every shadow writhed under the curse's malice. As the narrative surged forward, the story of the mansion, the traveler, Lady Evelyn, and her lover, wove together in a complex tapestry of fate and free will, of darkness confronted by light. The tale, imbued with the essence of gothic horror and spectral mystery, promised further depths to explore. Its heart, a labyrinth of narratives waiting to be unraveled, leading those who dare to venture further into its enigmatic embrace. The saga, rich with unending suspense and haunting revelations, continued to unfold. Its path winding through the shadowed corridors of the haunted estate, beckoning with the allure of hidden truths and the promise of a resolution yet to come. The confrontation in the mansion reached a crescendo, with the spell and the curse colliding in a spectacle of light and shadow. The mansion, a silent witness to centuries of sorrow, now echoed with the sound of its own rebirth or destruction. The walls pulsated with energy, their surfaces rippling as if alive, straining against the spectral forces tearing at the fabric of reality. The traveler, enmeshed in the heart of this tumult, chanted with a fervor born of desperation and hope, his voice harmonizing with the spectral choir of the mansion's souls, became a powerful force against the dark entity. The air around him vibrated with the as the dawn's first light pierced the horizon. The struggle within the mansion reached its apocalyptic peak. The traveler, his voice now a resonant echo of the myriad souls entwined with the mansion's fate, pushed the spell to its ultimate limit, the spectral energy. A maelstrom of light and darkness swirled with increased ferocity, illuminating the mansion in an ethereal glow. The dark entity born from centuries of accumulated grief and malice, writhed in agony under the spell's growing power. Its form, a shifting mass of shadow and despair, began to fracture. The light slicing through its darkness, severing the tendrils of pain that anchored it to the mansion. Lady Evelyn and her lover, their spirits nearly translucent in the spell's brilliance, reached for each other across the divide of realms. Their hands met, and a surge of light exploded from their touch, a beacon of pure, unbridled love and redemption. This union of souls, long separated by the curse, acted as a catalyst amplifying the spell's power exponentially. The mansion, sensing the imminent end of its long suffering, seemed to resonate with a deep, mournful sigh. The walls, floors, and ceilings, imbued with the essence of every soul that had passed through its domain, shone with a blinding light, expelling the shadows that had clung to its corners for ages. With a final, defiant scream, the dark entity shattered, its essence dissolving into the light. The curse
curse lifting in a crescendo of spectral liberation. The mansion's haunted wails turned to whispers of peace. As one by one, the spirits of those trapped within its walls were released, their forms fading into the morning light, leaving behind the echoes of their departure. The traveler, now the instrument of the mansion's salvation, collapsed, drained of strength, but filled with a profound sense of accomplishment. As he lay there, the mansion around him quieted, its architecture no longer a monument to despair, but a testament to perseverance and hope. The sun rose fully, casting golden rays through the broken windows, touching the dust motes dancing in the air, the light symbolizing a new dawn for the mansion. Lady Evelyn and her lover, united in death as they could not be in life, vanished in a soft glow, their legacy no longer one of tragedy, but of a love that transcended time and death. The mansion, freed from the curse, stood silent and serene, its halls no longer echoing with sorrow, but with the promise of new beginnings. The traveler, his mission completed, walked through the now peaceful rooms, the weight of the past lifted from his shoulders as he exited the mansion, turning to look back one last time. The estate seemed almost ordinary in the daylight, its dark history finally at rest. He walked away, leaving the mansion to its silence, a relic of the past now ready to face the future its horrors replaced by the quiet whisper of redemption. In the end, the mansion on the hill, once a beacon of horror and despair, became a legend of resilience and renewal. Its story, a chilling yet uplifting tale of the power of courage, love, and redemption in the face of darkness. In the heart of the ancient, whispering forest, where the thick canopy blots out the sun, casting perpetual twilight on the gnarled roots below, the air is heavy with a silent, foreboding presence. The locals, weathered and wary, speak in hushed tones of the Wendigo, a malevolent spirit cursed to roam these woods hungering eternally for human flesh. Our story begins with a group of four friends, Alex, Jamie, Casey, and Morgan, who set out on a weekend camping trip into the forest's uncharted depths. Unbeknownst to them, they cross into the Wendigo's domain. As night descends, the forest seems to come alive with strange noises, distant howls, cracking branches, and the unsettling feeling of being watched. The friends gather around the campfire, trying to shrug off the unease creeping into their bones. Alex, a natural storyteller, begins to recount the local legend of the Wendigo. Once a man who resorted to cannibalism during a harsh winter and was transformed into a monstrous creature forever cursed to stalk these woods. As the night deepens, the air grows inexplicably colder. Frost forms on the ground, despite it being midsummer. A sense of dread settles over the group, and they retreat into their tents, hoping for the safety of daylight. But sleep eludes them as the forest's nocturnal symphony is pierced by a sound is neither animal nor human, a chilling, guttural howl that reverberates through the trees. In the early hours of the morning, Morgan, 
restless and unable to sleep, steps out of the tent for fresh air. The campfire is long dead, and the moon is obscured by thick clouds, casting everything into darkness. Morgan's breath mists in the air, and the ground crunches with frost underfoot. A sudden snap of a twig in the darkness freezes Morgan in place, straining to see through the blackness. Morgan catches a glimpse of glowing eyes and antler-like horns silhouetted against the night sky. Morgan turns to run back to the tent, heart pounding, but stops dead as another pair of eyes appears in the path. Trapped between two glowing gazes, Morgan realizes, with a sinking heart, that they are not alone. The creatures circle the camp their forms half seen, more shadow than substance, whispering in a language that chills the soul. As the rest of the group emerges, drawn by Morgan's panicked cries, they find themselves encircled by a pack of wraith-like figures, the Wendigo and its cursed followers, hunger evident in their inhuman eyes. The friends stand back to back desperately searching for a way out as the Wendigo's followers close in, their breath like the cold of the grave. Just as the creatures prepare to strike, a distant sound echoes through the forest, a deep, resonant horn that seems to come from the heart of the woods. The Wendigo and its minions pause, heads tilting in unison as if listening to a call only they can hear. In that brief moment, the friends see their chance to escape, grabbing their gear and fleeing into the dark, dense forest. The story leaves off as they dash through the underbrush, the sounds of their pursuers' footsteps and the mysterious horn intertwining in the night, leading deeper into the heart of the cursed woods. The friends, driven by primal fear, plunge deeper into the heart of the forest, their breaths ragged, the cold biting at their skin. They stumble through the undergrowth, branches clawing at their clothes, the sounds of their pursuers hauntingly close. The forest seems endless. Each twist and turn leading them further into a labyrinth of ancient trees and unseen dangers. As dawn breaks, the haunting calls of the Wendigo and the eerie horn fade, swallowed by the light. Exhausted and terrified, Alex, Jamie, Casey, and Morgan find a secluded glen to rest. They huddle together, speaking in whispers eyes wide with the terror of the night's events. They realize they are lost. With no sense of direction in the vast wilderness that seems to conspire against them. Jamie, with a background in survival, takes the lead, trying to devise a plan. They decide to move at first light, hoping to find a way out of the forest or a ranger station. As they navigate the dense woods, strange symbols carved into the trees, and odd ritualistic totems made of bones and feathers become more frequent, signaling that this part of the woods is sacred or cursed. The atmosphere is thick with the sense of being watched, and unnatural cold spells sweep through randomly frosting leaves and chilling their breaths, a reminder of the Wendigo's presence. They come across a clear stream, and while refilling their water supplies, Casey notices something odd on the other bank. A backpack, weathered and old, as if it had been there for years. Inside, they find a journal belonging to a hiker who had ventured into the forest years ago never to return. The entries start cheerfully, but soon turn into frantic notes about being stalked by something sinister. As evening approaches, 
they find a dilapidated cabin, seemingly abandoned. With no better options and nightfall imminent, they decide to take shelter. Inside, the cabin is strewn with old, moldy furniture and faded photographs of a man who matches the description of the cursed Wendigo from the legends. They realize this must have been his home before his transformation. Night descends, and with it, a suffocating silence. The group sets up a watch rotation, too anxious to sleep. During Casey's watch, a soft thumping sound begins on the roof, slow and deliberate. Peering out the window, Casey sees nothing but the oppressive darkness of the forest. The thumping continues, growing in intensity, as if something or someone is walking deliberately overhead. Suddenly, the cabin door creaks open, revealing the moonlit forest outside. A cold draft sweeps through, extinguishing the lantern, plunging the room into darkness. Panic sets in as the friends scramble in the dark, hearing whispers at the edge of their hearing, a language unknown but terrifyingly familiar. The story pauses here, with the group trapped in the cabin, the thumping overhead growing louder, and the door standing ominously open, leading into the dark, unknown woods where the Wendigo roams. In the pitch black cabin, the friends are paralyzed with fear, the thumping on the roof echoing like a heartbeat. They clutch whatever makeshift weapons they can find, a broken chair leg, a rusted hatchet, and a fire poker. The whispers outside grow louder, a cacophony of voices that seem to speak directly into their minds, sowing terror and discord. Morgan, whose resolve is crumbling under the weight of the night's horrors, suggests they try to flee while whatever is on the roof is distracted. But Alex, the most level-headed among them, insists they stay put until daylight, fearing what lies in wait in the darkness outside. The group is torn, their friendship strained by fear and the instinct to survive. As they argue, a sudden silence falls. The thumping stops. The whispers cease. The forest outside seems to hold its breath. Then, with a violent force, the cabin door slams shut, extinguishing the last sliver of moonlight. In the darkness, they hear the sound of slow, deliberate footsteps inside the cabin with them. A cold wind circles the room carrying a faint, guttural whisper that chills them to the bone. The footsteps stop, and without warning, objects begin to move on their own, hurled by unseen forces. The friends dodge books, shattered glass, and twisted metal as the cabin becomes a maelstrom of poltergeist activity. Amidst the chaos, Jamie glimpses a figure in the shadows, its eyes glowing with a predatory light. The Wendigo is inside with them. They scramble to find hiding spots as the creature searches with a hunger-driven frenzy. Casey, hidden under a rotted floorboard, finds an old, dusty tome with strange symbols on the cover, similar to those they saw in the woods. Whispering a prayer, Casey opens the book hoping for a way to repel the creature. As the Wendigo draws near, the temperature drops sharply, frost spreading across the walls. The creature's breath is a hiss of steam in the icy air, and its footsteps leave prints on the frosted floor. Just as it approaches Morgan's hiding place, Casey, driven by desperation, reads aloud a chant from the tome. The cabin shakes, and a blinding light fills the room, causing the Wendigo to howl in rage and pain. The light recedes, and the friends find themselves alone in the cabin, the creature gone. They are exhausted, terrified, 
and unsure if the reprieve is temporary. The tome in Casey's hands seems to be a collection of knowledge about the Wendigo, and possibly a guide to ending the curse. With dawn breaking, they make a difficult decision. Instead of leaving the woods, they must delve deeper to find the origin of the Wendigo's curse, hoping to end it and save themselves. The journal found earlier points them towards a hidden valley, shrouded in legends and said to be the heart of the Wendigo's territory. As they prepare to leave the cabin, the forest seems unnaturally quiet, as if watching their every move. They step outside, the tome as their guide, heading towards the valley. The story of their harrowing journey into the cursed woods continuing to unfold, leading them deeper into the unknown. Armed with the tome and a new sense of purpose, Alex, Jamie, Casey, and Morgan venture towards the hidden valley, the heart of the Wendigo's territory. The forest around them is dense and oppressive, with ancient trees looming like silent sentinels, their branches twisted in grotesque shapes. The air is filled with an eerie mist that seems to warp and play tricks on their eyes, making the path ahead uncertain. As they journey deeper, the landscape changes subtly. The trees grow taller, their trunks marked with the same strange symbols found in the tome. The ground is littered with bones and remnants of old campsites, signs of those who ventured here before and never left. The silence is pervasive, broken only by the occasional distant howl that sends shivers down their spines. The tome guides them, its pages revealing paths and warnings in cryptic verses. Casey, who has become the reluctant keeper of the tome, deciphers a route through the woods that leads to a steep ravine. The path is narrow and treacherous, winding down into a valley shrouded in fog and darkness, even in the light of day. Descending into the valley, the friends notice the temperature dropping rapidly, their breath turning to mist in the air. The forest floor is covered in a thin layer of ice, and frozen figures, trapped in twisted poses of terror, emerge from the fog, revealing the fate of those touched by the Wendigo's curse. The group reaches the valley floor, where the fog is so thick it swallows all sound, creating an oppressive silence. In the center of the valley stands an ancient altar, made of stones, cold to the touch, and covered in more symbols from the tome. The altar radiates a dark energy, and the air around it vibrates with the power of old magic. Jamie, with a knowledge of folklore, suggests the altar is where the Wendigo was cursed, and might be where the curse can be undone. They start setting up around the altar, using the instructions from the tome to prepare for a ritual they barely understand, driven by the hope of ending the nightmare. As night falls, they light a fire, and the dancing flames cast eerie shadows across the misty valley. The ritual begins with Casey reading from the tome, the ancient words resonating in the air, seeming to weave through the trees and mist. The symbols on the altar glow faintly, responding to the recited chant. Suddenly, the forest erupts into life. Shadows move rapidly between the trees, and the howls of the Wendigo and its minions fill the air, closer and more terrifying than ever. The friends continue the ritual, their voices rising over the cacophony of howls and the wind that starts to whip around them, creating a vortex of leaves and snow. 
as the ritual reaches its climax, the Wendigo itself emerges from the shadows, its form more terrifying than any of them had imagined. A gaunt figure with antlers, its eyes burning with malice and hunger, it charges toward the altar, intent on stopping the ritual and consuming its challengers. The friends stand their ground, reciting the final words of the chant as the Wendigo crosses the boundary of the ancient stones and into the light of the fire. The air crackles with energy, and a bright light engulfs the altar, the Wendigo and the friends, blinding them and shaking the ground beneath their feet. The story pauses here, with the outcome of the ritual uncertain, the fate of the friends hanging in the balance, and the darkness of the Wendigo's curse threatening to engulf them all as the blinding light envelops the valley. The friends feel a force pulling at the very essence of their beings, a tug of war between the darkness of the Wendigo's curse and the ancient magic they have unleashed. Time seems to stand still, the only sound the roar of energy colliding with the creature's malice. When the light finally dims, the friends find themselves lying on the ground, dazed and disoriented. The altar's glow fades and the symbols etched into its surface are now lifeless. The forest is silent, the oppressive atmosphere lifted, replaced by a tentative sense of peace. The Wendigo is nowhere to be seen, leaving only scorched earth where it stood. Weak but determined, the group stands, surveying their surroundings. The frozen figures and eerie mist have vanished, replaced by a forest that feels normal, its air fresh and clean. They cautiously explore the valley, finding no trace of the Wendigo or its minions, only the remnants of their own camp and the now inert altar. As dawn breaks, they decide to leave the valley, guided by a faint path that wasn't there before, leading them through the forest with an ease they hadn't experienced on their way in. The forest feels less menacing, and they begin to hope that the ritual worked, that the curse is broken. Their journey back is long but uneventful, the forest gradually giving way to familiar trails and eventually the outskirts of civilization. They emerge from the woods in the late afternoon, exhausted, their clothes torn and faces haggard, carrying the weight of their experience in their eyes. They find their way to the nearest town, where their sudden appearance and wild tales are met with skepticism and disbelief. Only the old, weathered locals, who know the legends of the forest, look at them with a mix of fear and respect whispering that the Wendigo's curse may be dormant, but is never truly gone. The friends part ways, each carrying the burden of their ordeal differently. Alex becomes obsessed with researching ancient curses and folklore, desperate to understand what they encountered. Jamie tries to return to normal life, but is haunted by nightmares of being chased through an endless forest. Casey keeps the tome, studying its contents with a mix of fear and fascination, while Morgan becomes a recluse, rarely leaving home, jumping at shadows and avoiding the woods at all costs. As seasons change, reports of missing hikers in the region start to surface, with rumors of strange howls and figures seen in the mist. The friends now forever linked by their shared horror, begin to sense that their encounter with the Wendigo was only a chapter in a longer, darker saga. In the dead of winter, 
on a night when the moon is hidden behind thick clouds. A chilling howl echoes through the trees near the forest's edge. In a small, lonely cabin, Morgan awakens from a fitful sleep. A cold dread filling the room. Outside, something moves in the shadows, its form tall and gaunt, with eyes that burn in the darkness. The story continues, teetering on the edge of the unknown, with the haunting legacy of the Wendigo's curse lingering. A reminder that some horrors are too deep to be truly vanquished. In the dead of night, with the howl still reverberating through the trees, Morgan's cabin becomes a focal point of dread. The figure outside, obscured by darkness and swirling snow, moves with purpose towards the door. Inside, Morgan, gripped by terror, recalls the eyes that now seem to peer through the windows, the same malevolent gaze they had encountered in the forest. Morgan hastily contacts Alex, Jamie, and Casey, the fear evident in every hurried word. The group, once fragmented by their harrowing experience, reunites in response to the ominous threat. They converge at Morgan's cabin, bringing with them the tome and a collection of research, weapons, and traps. Prepared to face what they believe to be the return of the Wendigo, as they fortify the cabin and lay out plans based on their past encounter and the tome's ancient knowledge, the wind outside howls with increasing ferocity, as if mocking their efforts. They set up protective symbols and barriers around the property, hoping to ward off the creature. Through the night, they take turns keeping watch memories of their last encounter haunting them, sharpening their resolve. Meanwhile, in the forest, the creature stalks through the snow, its form shifting. Sometimes a gaunt figure with antlers, other times a shadow among the trees, always with those piercing, glowing eyes. It seems to be searching, probing their defenses testing their resolve. As dawn approaches, the tension in the cabin reaches its peak. A loud crash breaks the silence, followed by the sound of something large and heavy dragging across the porch. They brace for an assault, but instead, the morning light reveals tracks in the snow, leading away from the cabin, deep into the woods. The friends, driven by a mix of fear and determination, decide to follow the tracks, believing that it may lead them to answers, or perhaps to a way to end the curse once and for all. The trail takes them deeper into the forest, much farther than they have ever gone before, into parts where the snow seems untouched by human presence. The tracks lead to a secluded clearing, where the snow is marred by signs of a struggle. In the center, they find a figure half buried in the snow. Not the Wendigo, but a person, barely alive, muttering deliriously about the woods, the cold, and the eyes watching from the darkness. As they tend to the stranger, the air grows unnaturally cold and the familiar sense of being watched returns. The trees around the clearing rustle without wind, and a low growl echoes, circling them. The group realizes that they have been led into a trap, not just by the Wendigo, but by the forest itself, which seems to be an extension of the creature's will. They form a protective circle, home open in Casey's hands as they prepare to defend themselves and the stranger. The forest darkens and shadows lengthen 
twisting into forms that whisper of ancient fears. The growl becomes a cacophony of voices, as if the forest and the wendigo are speaking in unison, a language of hunger, hatred, and cold. The clearing becomes a battleground, the air crackling with the power of the ancient curse, clashing with the knowledge and determination of the friends. The story pauses here, in a moment suspended between the raw ferocity of the Wendigo's assault and the fragile hope of the group's stand against the encroaching darkness. As the standoff in the clearing intensifies, the friends circle tighter, their breath visible in the freezing air, faces etched with determination and fear. The tome in Casey's hands glows softly, its pages fluttering as if caught in an unseen breeze, revealing spells and incantations that seem to pulsate with power. The forest around them comes alive with shadowy figures, echoes of the Wendigo's minions, creeping closer, their forms blurred between reality and nightmare. The air fills with the sound of whispers, growls, and the cracking of frozen earth, despite the terror gripping their hearts. The group begins to recite the incantations from the tome, their voices uniting in a chant that rises above the cacophony of the forest. With each word spoken, the clearing is bathed in a spectral light long, twisted shadows as the figures draw near. The ground trembles underfoot, and the trees sway as if in a storm, their branches reaching down like the fingers of giants. The Wendigo itself emerges from the shadows, towering over the group, its eyes ablaze with ancient malice. Alex and Jamie, armed with makeshift weapons, move to the forefront, ready to defend the group, while Morgan tends to the injured stranger, who whispers of hidden paths and forgotten lore that could turn the tide against the creature. The stranger speaks of a heartstone, an ancient relic buried within the forest, capable of binding or banishing the Wendigo. Driven by this new knowledge, the group's chant becomes more fervent, directing the power of the tome towards the Wendigo, holding it at bay. The creature, enraged, lashes out with ferocious power, sending waves of ice and shadow cascading through the clearing. Trees explode into splinters, and the ground cracks open, releasing gusts of frozen air that threaten to extinguish the life warmth of the group. In the midst of this chaos, Casey spots a faint glow emanating from a nearby thicket, possibly the heartstone mentioned by the stranger. With a shared look of understanding, the group makes a desperate dash towards the light, their path obstructed by the Wendigo's minions and the treacherous terrain. The chase leads them deeper into the heart of the forest, where the snow is untouched and the air vibrates with untamed magic. The glow leads them to an ancient grove, where a stone, pulsing with an inner light, stands at its center, half buried in the snow and encased in ice. The Wendigo, sensing the threat of the heartstone, howls in fury summoning a blizzard that engulfs the grove, reducing visibility to mere inches. The friends fight their way through the storm, their survival instincts pushing them towards the stone. As they reach the heartstone, they find it inscribed with symbols that resonate with the tome's teachings. Together, they perform a ritual infusing the stone with the combined force of their will and the ancient magic of the tome. The 
grove lights up with a blinding flash, and the storm intensifies, becoming a vortex of snow, wind, and energy, with the Wendigo at its center, battling against the pull of the heartstone. The story pauses here, with the fate of the friends, the stranger, and the Wendigo hanging in the balance, engulfed in the climactic battle between ancient curses and the desperate hope of those caught in its grasp. As the vortex of snow and wind rages around them, the friends cling to the heartstone, their last hope against the Wendigo's wrath. The air is filled with a cacophony of howls, cracks, and the deep, resonant thrumming of the stone. The Wendigo, now in the eye of the storm, thrashes against the invisible forces binding it, its screams echoing through the forest. The heartstone's light intensifies, casting long, stark shadows that dance wildly around the grove. The symbols on the stone glow hotly, a beacon in the blinding snowstorm. The friends, hands joined in a final act of unity, recite the last of the incantations, directing their collective will against the Wendigo. With a deafening roar, the storm peaks in intensity, and the Wendigo, caught in the heartstone's relentless pull, is drawn towards the glowing relic. Its form begins to disintegrate, unraveling like smoke in the wind as it is absorbed into the heartstone. The creature's howls diminish into whispers, then nothingness, as its essence is sealed within the stone. As the Wendigo vanishes, the storm abruptly ceases. The snow settles, and a sudden calm descends upon the forest. The heartstone's light dims, now a soft pulse, its job done. The forest, released from the curse's grip, seems to breathe a sigh of relief. The oppressive atmosphere lifts, and for the first time in what feels like an eternity, there is peace. The friends, exhausted yet elated, realize the magnitude of what they have accomplished. They have not only survived the Wendigo, but have also ended its reign of terror. The stranger, now recovering, reveals himself as a guardian of the forest, tasked with watching over the heartstone, a role he had failed until now. As the sun rises, casting golden light through the trees, the group makes their way back to the edge of the forest, their journey at an end. The townsfolk greet them with a mix of awe and disbelief, but the friends know the truth of their ordeal and the sacrifice it took to save not just themselves, but all who would venture into these woods. In the aftermath, the heartstone is buried deep within the forest, hidden away where its power can no longer be misused. The guardian takes up his watch again, this time with the friends as his allies, ensuring the Wendigo remains a tale of the past. The friends return to their lives, changed forever by their experience. They remain close, bound by a shared secret, and the knowledge that sometimes the monsters of legend are real and can be defeated. The forest is quiet now, its darkness held at bay, and while the scars of the Wendigo's reign linger, there is hope that the worst is over. The story concludes with the forest at peace, its silence no longer a sign of lurking terror, but a testament to the courage and resilience of those who dared to face their fears and protect the heart of the woods from the Wendigo's curse. <laughs>